Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12 to 15 says this, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Hallelujah. Um, it's going to be quite a Bible study this morning, as usual. You know what it is like with me already, don't you? <coughs> um, I like to use a lot of scriptures so that it is evident that I'm not making this up. It's, it's right there. Turn with me now to Numbers chapter 11. Numbers is towards it, the beginning of the, the book. No, I won't say <laughs> in between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> Numbers chapter 11. And verse 29. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. You there? Numbers chapter 11. Verse 29. Let's read from verse 26. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet, the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' assistant since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Let me read verse 29 again. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Turn with me now to Acts chapter 2. And Acts is between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Acts is more towards the end of the book, no? <coughs> Acts chapter 2. We know that Acts chapter 2 is where uh, the Spirit of the Lord came, the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. Could someone read that for me? In the last 
says, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Amen. So, you see, Moses was a man of God. <coughs> While Joshua was a bit, um, you know, he was kind of wondering, this shouldn't be happening. Moses said, listen, I wish that all God's people were prophets. And that his spirit would come upon all of them. Moses was in the spirit when he said that. Because that was exactly the Lord's intention. That all his people would be prophets. And that upon all of us, his spirit would come. So Jesus said in chapter 1 of this very same book, and verse 2, <coughs> You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Yes? And it did happen. <coughs> so, this was also prophesied by Joel. So what Peter was saying here was only a, a repeat of what um, Joel prophesied. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. What Joel and Peter is saying here is that there will be a whole generation You are here today and you're seeing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Peter is saying. But listen, your children, your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. And I can see that calm going. Where is he going with this? <laughs> Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. That's a few books towards the end of the Bible, away from where we are presented. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1. Could someone read verse 1 for me? First Corinthians 14 verse 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, except especially the gift of prophecy. You heard that. <coughs> desire spiritual gifts. It's okay to desire spiritual gifts. But especially desire the gift of prophecy. No, three witnesses can't be wrong. Four witnesses. Moses say, I wish all God's people prophesied. Joel prophesied that the Lord will pour out his spirit and the young men, our daughters and our sons and daughters, will prophesy there will be a whole generation of, of prophets. Peter came back and repeated it. Yes? And here now Paul is saying, listen, if you're going to desire gifts, it's good to desire gifts, but especially that you prophesy. Now, why is prophesying so important? That all these great men are saying, hey, listen, you all need to prophesy. You know why? Because a prophet is one who speaks forth God's word. This is not the same as quoting or repeating scriptures. Anyone can do that. It is speaking for God's word. <coughs> and it does not mean, well, so are you saying if I take up my Bible and if I start to speak what I read in here, that means I am prophesying? No. 
Because any politician, any unsaved, any atheist could, could read the Bible and, and read it out loud. That does not mean they're prophesying. So what does it mean then? The person who prophesies is the person who speaks God's word under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So it is God that is speaking through them. They are speaking forth the word of God as directed by the Holy Spirit. As they are taken over by the Holy Spirit. That's what it means when it says the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we are filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit takes over. Not by force, but because we submit ourselves to him and he is allowed to use us. And so Paul says, Does, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You see, because we can hold back when the Holy Spirit wants to move. Because the Holy Spirit is like a dove. The Holy Spirit does not force people to do things. He doesn't take you over and you have absolutely no control. No. But when he comes, don't be afraid. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow God to do through you what he so desires. The reason why we don't see the Holy Spirit moving more in our churches today is because we are afraid. We are thinking, man, if the Holy Ghost takes this meeting over, we can't tell what's going to happen. <laughs> and we want to have control, isn't it? Control is safe. We feel very safe when we can control everything, don't we? But if God takes over, I don't know if I can trust God, can, can I? That's the thought. But we're not just talking about the Holy Spirit taking over. We're talking about the Holy Spirit taking over our tongues. Because prophecy is speech. So, the Holy Spirit comes and he wants to speak <coughs> through us, that is prophesying. Hallelujah. So, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So you feel what you call the unction of God. You know that there is a power that is upon you. And you can feel God wanting to do something through. And 90% of the time, it involves your tongue. Because if the Holy Spirit is going to use you to prophesy, it's your tongue. You, you look, we don't have time, but you look at all those times when the scripture says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You will always see that they spoke. When they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is prophesying. So what am I trying to do? You remember the Revelation scripture that we just read? I am trying to move you and move myself as I meditate on, on, on these issues. I am trying to move us from the outside of the city to the inside of the city. Because outside, it's the, it's the corrupt are on the outside. They would wish they were on the inside, but no, they're not on the inside. They're on the outside. They practice deceit, sexually immoral, all this stuff. I want us to move from that outer, outside the city, into the inside of the city, where those, we are those who have washed our garments, we are clean, we are pure, and we have faith and allow God to use us. Amen? So then, I want us to remember two words, two very important words 
You remember the last time I was here, I started my message by talking about um, the two singers that's Psalm, Psalm um, 23. And one knew the psalm, but the other one knew the shepherd. The two words I'd like us to remember are these. Not all. You promise me to remember that? Not all. Not all who sings the song knows the shepherd. Turn with me to Mark chapter 5.
five, ten. Usually it's a, it's a minority, but there are some people there who they are experiencing heaven in their souls. And that's the church I want to see. I want to see more and more of us as we come to worship God. I was so delighted to see the worship group up here this morning. Mm. Wonderful. It really touched me. Let us focus on, 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 on coming into the presence of God, but not just to brush him, not just to crowd him, but to connect with him so the Holy Spirit can do something in us and through us. So we're not just singing the song because we know the words, but we know the Hallelujah. So, not all who is brushing against Jesus is connecting with him. When was the last time you connected with Jesus? You remember the last time again I, I, I spoke of that scripture um, uh, I think it's it's second Timothy chapter three, where Paul says that one of the things that will happen in the last days is that there will be many who have a form of godliness but deny his power. We have all the form, the shape, the look, the sound, the, the, the dress. This, the Bibles, the, 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 the concordances, all it, we have it all, but it's just a shell. The power is not in it. We have the worship, but it's just a shell. It lacks power. It lacks, it, it lacks, uh, uh, what, what's that word? Conviction. That's a sign of the end time. There will be many churches that's like that. But somewhere within that is the true church, the true people who when they come, they connect with Jesus. They don't just talk, they prophesy. They don't just read a scripture. They don't just recite something that they have read or heard. They Why? Because they're in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is moving through them. I wish all God's people would prophesy. I wish all God's people would have the Holy Spirit come upon them and be moved by the Holy Spirit and will speak not from mere education, not from mere hearsay, but will speak under the unction of God. They will be the very oracles of God. We need to move from the form to the reality. Hallelujah. Look at Daniel, please. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel is Old Testament, so we're going back towards the... But it's kind of to the middle, because it's after Psalms. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Between Jeremiah and Ezekiel, there is lamentation. You hear? Daniel chapter 11. And Daniel here is receiving from the angels what's going to happen in the last days. So he's speaking about the Antichrist. And in verse 31 to 35, Daniel chapter 11, 
This is what is said about the Antichrist. His armed forces will rise up to, dis to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. So the armed forces of the Antichrist. Yeah? Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation. This is also spoken of by Jesus in Matthew 24. Verse 32 of Daniel chapter 11. With flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will firmly resist him. Verse 33. Those who are wise will instruct many. Though for a time they will fall by the sword, or be burned, or captured, or plundered. When they fall, they will receive a little help. And many who are not sincere will join. In the last days, in the midst of persecution, there will be an influx of insincere people. So, not all are sincere. But Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says this, Give diligence to make your calling an election sure. And in 2 Corinthians, I think it's 13, Paul says, listen, try yourselves. Test yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Because not all are in the faith. But we need to see to it. We need to press like that woman who shouldn't be there because she, she, she is bleeding. It was wrong for her to be there. She is woman. She is bleeding. And she is pushing. But she pushed her way through the crowd and made a connection with Jesus. We need to see to it that we move from outside of the city, inside the city. We need to see to it that we move from just being a form of religion to being full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To allowing the unction of God to come upon us. To allow the Spirit of God to come upon us and fill us and use us. Because that is God's church. They that worship me will worship in spirit and in truth. Not all worship in spirit and in truth. But that's how true worshipers, the true worshipers, they worship in spirit and in sincerity. But not all are sincere. But let us see to it that we are among the sincere. Amen? Amen? Romans chapter 9. Moses said, I wish all God's people would speak as they are under the unction of God. Joel says that the time is coming when a people will speak as they are moved by the unction of God. And Paul himself says, hey, desire to speak as you are under the unction of Almighty God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 6. You there? <coughs> it 
It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Not all Israel is Israel. Not all who sing is worshiping. Not all who comes to church has a rebirth experience, is born again of the Spirit. Not all. But let's see to it that we are not among those who fall back, but of those who continue, continue, continue. Also, Matthew 7, 21, you don't have to turn here because it is popular. Jesus says, not all who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, listen, all this happened for us so that we may realize, listen, take heed, you think you stand, you fall. Don't get too relaxed about your state in God. Press in. Make time to pray. Make time to read God's word. We heard a scripture this morning. You will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jesus can be found. But he will only be found by those who seek him with all their heart. You know what it means to do something with all your heart? It means that that is your number one priority. Amen. Seek Him as your number one priority. I wish all God's people would speak under the ocean. <coughs> if God's people start to speak under the unction of God, there will be a lot less uh, what is this thing that ladies do when they talk to each other about each other? Gossiping. Compared to ladies, I'm going to make the show go now. You see, I'm digging a grave for myself. All right, huh? We have to get out fast after. <laughs> if God's people would prophesy, if God's people would allow their tongue to come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, oh, what a church we would have! If God's people would just allow the Holy Spirit to take them over and to use them. Oh, what a church we would have. If you desire any gifts, please remember this. Above all, desire to speak forth under the unction. <coughs> well, you have to have the unction. And to have the unction, you need to, to spend more time in the presence. It doesn't happen by chance. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us and be able to use us. We have to be available for Him to use us. We have to be washed. We have to be clean. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Pray with me, please. I want to take a few minutes to pray. 
And as you pray with me, I want, if you do not, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, that you ask that the Lord fill you with His Holy Spirit. I want you to pray for the Lord to give you a gift if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to pray that the Lord will cause you to prophesy. The fact that you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet. A prophet is a person who that is their job. God uses them to always prophesy and speak forth and direct the church. But all God's people should prophesy. Maybe not as a prophet, but you should prophesy. Amen? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Mighty God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come upon us. And that mighty God, we would all prophesy. Hallelujah. And that mighty God, the prophets that are among us will rise up. Father, we pray that you forbid that anything be done in your church that is not by your Holy Spirit and by the unction from on high. Oh God, we pray. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will help us to clean up our lives. That the Holy Spirit can fill us. That Almighty God, you will help us to clean up our tongue. That the Holy Spirit can use it. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, that it will be again as it was on that day of Pentecost. When Lord, fire was upon them. That Heavenly Father, they were all filled with your spirit and they spake as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Mighty God, we pray that Heavenly Father, everything that is done within your house will be by your Holy Spirit. Because Lord, not all who, who sings are worshipping. Not all who speak are prophesying. Not all who bear the name Christian are born again into the family of the living God. Not all who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. Not all. But mighty God, we pray that we will be a part of those who will. Heavenly Father, we pray that mighty God, we will empty of ourselves and we will make ourselves available to be used by you. That mighty God, by faith, we will press in until we touch God. Because not all who are crowding him are making a connection to him. Not all Israel is Israel. Oh God, not all that has the form has the power. Oh God, help us because these are the last days and it is time that God begin again to move in his church. It is time that again that we open the door and let him in because he stands at the door and knock. It is time that we open up ourselves so God again can move in our midst. Father, we pray Oh God, that we will stop chasing our personal dreams and start again to seek the living God and to be used by Him. Because not all, not all who join themselves with us are sincere. Not all. But mighty God, we pray that He will help us to become sincere and to be among the few that are not on the outside of the city, but are on the inside. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody who personally wants us to pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit this morning?